afternoon, everyone. I'm Art Fidel. Thanks for being here for tonight's broadcast. You know, there's not a day that goes by that we as journalists don't hear about or have to report on the murder of an innocent victim. It's the unfortunate reality of what we face. Now, some of these cases gain national attention, gripping the public's imagination, so much so that we're glued to the TV, not wanting to miss a single development. Right now, the media spotlight is on the Phil Spector trial, the musician, songwriter, and record producer on trial for the murder of 40-year-old actress Lana Clarkson. The prosecution called the last witness today, which was the 34th witness, by the way, to testify since this case began in April. Who can forget the Scott Peterson case? Peterson, of course, the former fertilizer salesman, was convicted in 2005 of killing his pregnant wife, Lacey, and unborn son, Connor. Peterson is now on death row, but still maintains his innocence. And you'll recall the case of Andrea Yates, the Houston, Texas mother who drowned her five young children in the bathtub in 2001. Yates was convicted of murder, but that conviction was later overturned by reason of insanity. Yates was suffering from postpartum depression. Just a few of the many examples out there, but uh, they all perhaps have one thing in common, a common thread, a deep, dark secret. Award-winning journalist Jane Velez Mitchell in her book says, yes, they do have that common thread. Her book is entitled, Secrets Can Be Murder. She's joining me now to talk more about this. Jane, you covered many of these high-profile cases. What secrets did you uncover, for example, in the Scott Peterson case? Oh, a very common secret, Art. Infidelity, it's happening all over the country right now as we speak. Scott Peterson was cheating on his pregnant wife, and Scott's girlfriend, Amber Fry, didn't know he was married. Amber's best friend finds out, confronts Scott, and he says, well, I was married, but my wife's gone, implying she dead. And of course, two weeks later, he turned that lie into the truth by killing her and their unborn son, Connor, and dumping their bodies in San Francisco Bay. And Art, there's another secret in that family, and sometimes we act out family secrets. Years before Scott Peterson was born, his mother gave away two children at at birth for adoption. Scott found out about this reportedly uh, just before he married Lacey when these two now adults entered his life. And obviously uh, that was just a bombshell that he had to absorb and he may have stuffed down. And of course his mother got rid of her children in one respect, so did he. He got rid of his unborn child through the act of murder. Yeah, and again, many of these cases are involved just regular people until they become national celebrities by way of their trial. But you say that many of these dark secrets are, are common secrets that anyone could have. Huh? They just turn deadly in this case. Absolutely, Art. You know, we like to think of ourselves as so different from criminals. They're over there. They're sociopaths. So let's throw them in the clinker and forget about them until somebody comes along and does something even worse. I think we have to evolve beyond crime and punishment and try to understand the why. And the why is these toxic secrets. And the secrets of criminals are the same secrets we have. That's why when we watch a, a trial on television, we're so fascinated because we experience a flash of recognition. We go, aha, I can relate to that. Ooh, that reminds me of something that happened to me. You know, sometimes the only difference between us and the criminal is that our secret's safe and theirs was exposed. And, and if you're actually in the courtroom, I mean, we report the things that uh, typically will come out of a court case, but not everything uh, gets to be public knowledge. Uh, do you often hear in these cases some things that we didn't get to hear because you were actually there? Sure, and a lot of things don't come out before the jury, but they still come out. Uh, for example, right now, Phil Spector, uh, the music mogul, is on trial for murder of a beautiful actress, Lana Clarkson. Now, his toxic secret was the suicide of his father when he was nine years old. In fact, on his father's tombstone, it reads, to know him was to love him. Phil Spector's first hit song is to know him is to love him. Now, uh, psychologists will tell you that we all try to undo or rework our most horrific childhood trauma. So how do you undo the suicide of your father? By cheating death over and over again. This is what Phil Spector did by waving loaded guns at so many people over the years, including his wife Ronnie Spector from the Renettes and John Lennon. Flash forward to the death of Lana Clarkson in his castle in Alhambra, and he says she committed suicide by putting the gun in her mouth and blowing her brains out. So he is still working through this whole issue of suicide from childhood all the way through adulthood. So many cases there. In your book, you try and tie these all together and try to put this in real layman's terms as to, uh, in a way that people can relate to these uh, now celebrity murder cases. Oh, absolutely. Uh, there's so much that can be learned from these cases. And 
the number one purpose of my book, Secrets Can Be Murder, is to remind people that honesty is always an option, even when you don't think it is. So many of these crimes could have been avoided had somebody simply been honest and told the truth to their lover or their spouse. And honesty is always an option, even when we think, no, it's impossible. I can't reveal the truth. You know, the funny part is a lot of these secrets that we keep so close to ourselves, people sense them anyway. I mean, if you're a philanderer, people sense that. If you're an alcoholic, people sense that. A drug addict, the same thing. So there, there really is uh, um, this tremendous desire to keep something secret when, in fact, so many people might sense the truth anyhow. And, and you mentioned uh, once before in this conversation toxic secrets. And, and what types of secrets tend to be more toxic than others? Well, sex is the number one area of our lives where the facade we present to the outside world is very different from the secret reality uh, behind the scenes. And money is another one. I mean, a lot of times people act like they've got a lot of money, and then when you scratch the surface, you find out they're deep in debt. And a lot of crimes occur because debt creates tremendous uh stress and trauma in a household. Take a look at the case of Neil Entwistle, the British man accused of killing his American-born wife and baby in Massachusetts. Uh, they were drowning in debt, and the wife couldn't get a straight answer from him. Where are we getting the money to afford the fancy car and the fancy house and the furniture? And he kept saying, everything's under control. You know, when you don't get a straight answer from your spouse, it's an alarm bell. Uh, chances are, if your gut's telling you something's wrong when it comes to sex, when it comes to money, uh, chances are your gut is right. So many common threads. Uh, Jane Velez Mitchell in the book is called Secrets Can Be Murder. Uh, thanks for talking with me tonight. And um, it's a very interesting read. And good luck with you in the book. Art, thank you for having me. Okay.